Hello, everyone. My name is Liza Kostreva, and I'm a regional literacy specialist with the Center for Literacy and Learning. Today, we're going to talk about learning to support your child with sounding out words. We will discuss what it looks like and sounds like to sound out a word and why it is important for children to learn to sound out words. We will also discuss how learning to sound out words helps the brain learn how to read. And then I will share some tips and strategies for supporting your child with sounding out words at home. First, what exactly do we mean when we say sounding out words? When we're sounding out a word, we look at the word, say the sounds for each letter or letters, and then put the sounds together to read the whole word. This is also known as decoding. So when you hear someone say decoding, know that they are talking about sounding out words. Here's an example. I'm going to sound out this word on the screen. K at cat. I pointed to each letter, said the sound, and then blended the sounds together to read the whole word. Children and beginning readers are taught how to sound out words during phonics instruction in classrooms. During phonics instruction, your child is learning to identify letters and letter patterns, the sounds that these letters and letter patterns make, and then they get to practice using knowledge of those sounds to read whole words. Beginning readers learn to sound out simple words with only two or three letters, like this word, cat. But as children get older, into second and third grade especially, they start learning more complex words that may have more letter sounds or multiple syllables or parts up to the word. However, many times children will still rely on the process of sounding out these more complex words in order to read them. I'm gonna show you another example of sounding out a word, but this time with a more challenging multi-syllable word. Con test, contest. Instead of going sound by sound, I recognized a chunk of the word and then put those chunks together to read the whole word. When your child becomes more proficient with reading, they will be able to recognize chunks of words and then blend those chunks together to read a whole word, just as I did with this word contest. Now that we understand what we mean by sounding out words or decoding, let's talk about why it's important to teach your child to sound out or decode words. When children learn to decode and sound out words, it supports and strengthens the connection between letters and letter sounds. So your child will really, really understand that letters make sounds and they'll be able to remember and identify which sounds each letter makes. Also, it becomes a strategy that your child will be able to use anytime they're reading something independently. They can use this strategy of sounding out words to read unknown words in any book or piece of text. We always want to work on giving children tools and strategies that they can use when they're independently reading. And finally, it aligns with how the brain learns to read. So let's talk about that for a moment. Unlike oral language development or speaking and listening, reading is not natural. When we are born, our brains are not wired to read. We have to be taught. We have to develop and strengthen pathways in the brain that allow us to read words and understand what we're reading. Research done over the past 50 years has found that children learn how to read best when they're taught phonics. So that means they're taught the sounds that letters make and how to use those sounds and knowledge of letters to sound out words. They're taught the code. There is a study that was done using fMRI images of the brain that really illustrates and proves why it's important for your child to learn to sound out words. The study split children into two groups. One group was taught to memorize words using flashcards. So they were shown a flashcard like this and told, this is the word cat, say it, memorize it. The students in group two were taught letter sounds and then how to put those sounds together to read a word. So they were taught to read the word cat like this, k at cat, using sounds and then blending those sounds together to sound out the word. The results 
showed that the children in group one that were taught to memorize words, while they maybe were able to remember the words they'd been taught, they could not read any new words or words that they had not been explicitly taught with those flashcards. Now the children in group two, however, that learned letter sounds and sounding out words, they were able to read words that had not been explicitly introduced. And they were able to take what they knew about letter sounds and decoding to read unfamiliar words and words that they'd never seen before. So overall, the children in this group, group two, had much greater proficiency in reading and much stronger overall reading skills. This study proved that we do not learn to memorize words as wholes. Our brains actually process every single letter and sound as we read. So eventually, through significant practice, this becomes automatic and effortless, and reading happens in just milliseconds. What does this mean for your child? Help them learn letter sounds and letter sound correspondences and encourage them to sound out words when they're reading, especially when your child is in that kindergarten through second grade age group. Also, check in on how your child is being taught to read at school. You can ask your child's teacher if they teach phonics, those letter sounds and how to sound out words. And if your child's school is not teaching phonics, think about advocating for them to do so. Now, how can you help your child learn to sound out words at home? I'm gonna talk about a few activities you can do that are simple, fun, and inexpensive to create. First, flashcards are a great tool for helping your child learn letter sounds and how to sound out words. There are so many different games you can play with just a single deck of flashcards. Here are a few of my favorites. First, you can do some quick quizzes. Simply write one word on the flashcard, and if you like, you can place a dot under each letter sound and had draw an arrow going all the way across, similar to the examples we showed earlier. Then put the cards face down in front of your child. They'll pick a card set and sound out the word on the card. Another fun game is called Kaboom. You can use the same deck of flashcards, but this time you're going to add a few flashcards that say Kaboom. To play the game, you can place all the cards face down or in a hat, have your child pick out a card and read the word on the card. But this time, when your child picks a Kaboom card, they have to return all of the cards they read to the hat and start all over again. Kids love it, it's so much fun. Another great game is called Slap the Word I Say. In this game, you will place three word cards in front of your child. You get to say one of the cards and your child can use their hand or a fly swatter for extra fun to slap the word that you've said. They just love it. Matching games and concentration are another really great way to help your child practice reading words in a fun way. Here's a quick tip if you play any of these games. Make sure the words have letter sounds that your child has learned. If you're not sure what sounds they should know or have been taught, reach out to your child's teacher and ask them for a list of the sounds that they've learned or even word lists to practice. Also, if you're thinking to yourself right now, I'm not sure what sound each letter makes. That is okay. Many of us don't remember how we learn to read or how to pronounce certain letter sounds and letter patterns. Our brain has just become so automatic with reading. There are plenty of short videos online that can teach you how to pronounce each letter. As always, another great way to support your child with learning how to read at home is to read new books together. If your child makes a mistake when reading a word, try not to just tell them the correct word. Instead, encourage them to pause and try to sound out the word. I'd like to leave you with a few tips for when you're reading with your child at home. First, be patient. It takes time and a lot of practice for decoding to become automatic. For some children, it may only take a few repetitions to get it, but for others, it may take a few hundred repetitions. So be mindful that children develop at different rates. Be patient, keep practicing, and point out every small success and progress that your child makes. Next, encourage your child to sound out words when they're reading. 
Don't let them guess or use picture clues to figure out words. Really help them focus on the letters and the corresponding sounds. Next, be positive before you correct a mistake. Try to point out something your child did well first before telling them about their error. This might sound something like this. Wow, you're doing a great job figuring out all of these words. Let's pause and look at this word one more time. Can you try sounding it out again? And remember, your child's teacher is always a resource. Ask your child's teacher about what letter sounds or types of words your child has learned at school so you know what to practice at home. Your child's teacher may even have word lists or books that you can use at home to practice reading. Now you're ready to go enjoy some reading time with your child.